The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. The MLB playoffs are in full swing, and it's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement coming from the MLB this year in the offseason, or I guess the postseason. Uh, and then we're going to get to a two-minute drill where we're going to talk about some news and updates in really all kinds of sports. And then we're going to get to the college football because that is where we thrive here on this show. We're going to talk about our Heisman top five that's going to be shaken up quite a bit this week after some of the performances here in week seven so our week eight heisman top five we're going to drop that for you guys and we're going to give you our top bets for college football here in this upcoming week of week eight we've got all of this and much more to get to today on rising to the occasion Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. So happy to have you here along with us. We are, man, it's it's been a long week for me, but uh, we're, we're going to jump in here and make sure we give you guys the best content we can, regardless of what's going on and where we are. And uh, right now I'm in the middle of the state of Iowa, uh, having a lot of fun here, but uh, yeah, just all kinds of busy week going on. But uh, before we get started, if you're watching right now, we want to make sure that if you're watching on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button and you can hit that like button as well. That helps us out a ton, uh, more than you know. So please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can always give us a five-star review. Or if you don't listen on one of those platforms and still want to give us a review, you can always give us a review over on their website. That is rising2.com. You can go to R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O. Dot com and click on the review button and give us a review over there as well. But we will also have to mention something that means quite a bit to us here on this show because we have a lot of fun here later. We're going to drop our top bets for the weekend. And one of the most important thing to do when betting is to have the right sports book for you and for your needs. And on top of that, you also need to know uh, what sports books you can get the best exclusive offers from. Maybe there's a new sports book that you haven't tried. Maybe there's a sports book out there that has better odds than the one that you're currently using. Or maybe you're n- just new to sports betting and you're, you're a sports fan, you want to get into it and just have a little bit of fun. Uh, we do recommend and we always uh, urge everybody, not recommending, we are urging you to please bet responsibly if you do. But one way for you to find sports books that are not only available to you in your area, but also sports books that have the most exclusive offers, you can go to rising2.com slash bet. That is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. We've put this website together for you where you can go over there and check it out. And it is all of our top preferred uh, sports books. You can go there. It'll give you a little breakdown of the sports book. It'll give you a little bit of, of other people's reviews on the sports books. And like I said, it also has the most exclusive offers from all of the top sports books. We've got sports books like DraftKings and FanDuel uh, and BetMGM, Caesar Sportsbooks points bet all of those and so much more and like i said as well you can select your region where you live and it will give you sports books that are available in your state in your region wherever you are on wherever you're listening so you can go over there again it is rising2.com that is r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o.com slash bet r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o dot com slash b-e-t go there and again it shows you all of the sports books available to you and when you click on those links using that that website it also gives you those the most exclusive sports book offers which is the most amazing way to find a new sports book or if you're getting into sports sports betting you can go in there and uh, get started the right way by finding the best one for you directly uh, and again please be 21 or older to bet and please bet and gamble responsibly we urge you at the the, the most uh, to do that. But I'm not the only one that likes to place a little, little bit of a wager on the games. Uh, it's also my co-host, Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Then I've been on the sports gambling, but I'm I'm gambling responsibly, to say the least. There's been a lot of NHL that's been going on, and I've been I've been winning some cash over out of there. And overall, I'm doing pretty good. Got to start a new job this week. Then that's going pretty good so far. Then just coasting through the rest of the week, just trying to make it through it just because we have a really exciting trip to go down to Oklahoma this weekend. Then that's going to be fun. We'll go watch the Oklahoma Sooners play against UCF. Then um, 
But watching for what we've had going on this week, obviously the World Series has been buzzing. Um, I know Blake's going to have a fun time talking about Bryce Harper. Um, <laughs> college football has definitely been been on the fun slide for everything. You've seen a lot of good games, a lot of upsets, then some surprising games. But I'm going to cut the chit-chat, Josh, and let's get rolling with these sports. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and like you said, there is a lot to get to. And you mentioned the other man from Mobile, Alabama, too. We got to bring in our co-host, Blake Lane. How you doing, man? Oh, what's up, fellas? <laughs> I was oh, waiting for it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, we got we got the, the new rising to the occasion star, too. Levi making his yes, appearance sir. on the show for the first time. Uh, so, no, nah, man, it's it's exciting. We're, we're, we're glad you're able to hop on regardless of, of having daddy duty, too. So it's it's always good to have you boys on. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We're going to start off with the World Series and stuff that's been going on there. I guess you don't call it the World Series until the final matchup. Is that right, Blake? Yeah, man, that's right. It's the okay. uh, you got the ALCS and the NLCS, the National League Championship Series and the uh, American League Championship Series. All right, so I guess just Championship Series. I guess is, is it okay to call it the M- the MLB playoffs? Yeah. Okay, because um, I'm not I'm not used to, to the terminology for baseball. So as as yeah, everybody knows yeah, here, I'm 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 new to getting back into the MLB, and so I don't really know what the terminology and stuff like that. So I guess we'll call it the MLB playoffs. So uh, I guess just ignore that that uh, banner over there to the side that might pop up and say World Series. But we're leading to the World Series. That's why I feel like the whole thing, you know, you're leading up to it. Um, but we've got a couple of matchups right now, the guys that has turned into a fun one. Uh, we we look over at. Uh, the Texans, starting off with the Texans and what they've been doing against the Astros, just whooping up on the Astros. Uh, and, and we talked about these teams. Uh, and, and Jeremy, I, I, I hate to say it, you were wrong. The Braves didn't make it through. They didn't make it out. The Phillies, uh, they ended up taking them down. So now we got the Phillies going against the Diamondbacks who met up with the the uh, the see it was the Dodgers for the for the Diamondbacks, right? So uh, looking at, at this whole matchup, everything that's been going on, I've been tuning in. I mean, that's one thing. I think it's been mentioned by a lot of different guys and a lot of different sports shows and sports commentary that the MLB does a very good job with their postseason. They just don't do a good job of, of correlating it back to the to the reg, regular season. Um, but it is really exciting whenever we see the playoffs start for the MLB and see and the, these teams. I think last year was when I whenever I first got into it big time. Uh, I'd always paid attention to what was going on in the world in the World Series of playoffs uh, and all that for the MLB. But getting into it last year was a lot of fun, and now we've got. I guess two, the two that met up in the in the World Series last year, uh, kind of trying to come back. But it looks like the Astros are not going to make it there, where the Phillies are making a really big splash. So let's start off with the Texans first. We got the Texans up 2-0 against the Astros right now, uh, just looking dominant. They've got another game tonight, which will be last night for everybody watching right now. Um, but Blake, let's start off with you, man. You're the you're the MLB expert of the of the three of us. Uh, what's going on over there with the Texans? How are they How are they able to to perform this well uh, going up against the Astros right now? Uh, I can tell you, man, they can absolutely stroke. Look, the the Texas Rangers are uh, a complete lineup, uh, and their pitching has been phenomenal. Um, I mean, you got Nathan Eovaldi comes from the Red Sox and uh, just comes to Texas the other night and and throws an absolute gem, Josh. Uh, The lineup through and through, man, you get Corey Seager over from the Dodgers, Marcus Simeon over – Uh, That middle infield, yeah, they paid a ton of money for it, but, man, they're stroking. And then you got Jonah Heim, he's stroking. Uh, It's just uh, Adolis Garcia, he's killing the baseball. I mean, their lineup is absolutely deadly. And then you get a game one performance from Jordan Montgomery, who they got from the Yankees. And, uh, you know, a lot of people looked at Jordan Montgomery at the Yankees, and and that's the reason they got rid of him, right? I believe they – they got rid of him uh, to the Cardinals last year, uh, and so you know they, they, the Yankees didn't. He didn't really do a whole lot for him. But then he comes out in Game One and shoves, and then you get Nathan Eovaldi, and he he shoves in Game Two. Uh, they're just a complete team right now, man. They're, the pitching's there, the hitting's there, uh, and the Astros just haven't got the clutch hit like the Rangers have. They haven't gotten the clutch hit, uh, and. You know, I, I don't think the pitching's been terrible for the Astros. 
Uh, I just don't think the hitting in key situations is there. Uh, Altuve had a big chance the other night, and he didn't come through. Uh, you're not really used to seeing that, you know. Uh, th- that's that dude, you know, without the the whole cheating allegations and everything from from back in the day. Uh, that dude's probably a Hall of Famer. So, uh, you know, you're used to him getting that clutch hit. Jordan, um, you know, you're used to him hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Kyle Tucker, he struggled in a couple ABs. Uh, but I really like this this Texas Rangers team, man. Like, I really think them and the Phillies are going to be an absolute war uh, in the, in the World Series. I think that is going to be an all time matchup. Yeah, I think it's shaping up for a really fun one. And we, uh, a, a little while back, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, something like that, we we talked about all of the MLB teams and how it was shaping up just before the playoffs really formed and who's in, who's out, who looks like they're going to be in. And I know for a fact we did bring up the Texans. That was one of the teams that we looked at and we were thinking how dangerous they could be. Uh, and then obviously we, we picked the Braves as being the favorite, and I think everybody did. But the Phillies smashed them, uh, and they were able to get them out of the way. But, uh, I mean, Jeremy, I know you, you and I were just now talking about it. We were able to kind of tune in and check check these matchups going on in the in the MLB playoffs right now and seeing what's going on. Um, but this Texans team, I personally, I think they're, they're looking better now than they did when, you know, when we expected them to make it this far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Texas Rangers, they've definitely came out, and they've – They've shown themselves to why they belong in the in the postseason, say the least. I mean, going into game one, only being a, a low scoring two to nothing game, I was thinking, okay, man, this this is really going to be like a nail biter for a series between the Rangers and the Astros. And like Blake said, it really good. I mean, with the Astros, their their abs and just their their clutch situations, and it's just not it's just not popping right now. I mean. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be coming anytime soon, but if it does, they need to kind of get on the gas pedal a little bit sooner than later, to say the least, just because if you lose one more, then you are DU undone. Then, um, I mean, the Texas Rangers, they're definitely, they're definitely showing, like I said, they, they mean business and this is why they belong in the postseason. Just because if they, if they beat the Astros, which at this rate, I expect to see them going to the world series, unless, something crazy happens in the ne- in these next couple games but i wouldn't be surprised that they give philly a run for their money to say the least josh oh yeah yeah absolutely and and looking at it too uh, and just the, uh, you guys said it really well uh, for the for the rangers but looking at it right now i think the phillies They've been the most surprising to me because I, I expected the Phillies to come in and put up a fight, but for one, to take down the Giants, take down the the, the Braves and being able to do that, that's really tough. Um, but then on top of that, being able to play as dominant as they have. Uh, so then now against the Diamondbacks, their first game, 5-3, to three, uh, and, and that one that one came came down to a little bit more of a, a nail-biter here and there, but it just felt like they constantly kept themselves in control. But then last night, uh, I guess Tuesday night, if you guys were able to watch that game at all, it, it turned into a bloodbath, and it was just the Phillies completely destroying uh, the Diamondbacks, and the Diamondbacks couldn't stop anything that that they were that was being thrown at them. Kyle Schwarber had a really good game, looking at what he was able to do, uh, and just overall, just you know, three runs, uh, three home runs hit uh, for the Phillies again in that game, and just looking everything that they, that they that they did, their hitting has just been phenomenal. I think. Their hitting uh, has been probably the best that I've seen in all of the MLB playoffs so far. Um, but Blake, like Jeremy said, I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about Bryce Harper and what he's been able to do in, in these th- this uh, postseason so far for the MLB and for, for the Phillies so far. Um, but take it away. What about this, this Phillies-Diamondbacks uh, matchup right now? Uh, first thing I'll say is Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola have been electric for the Phillies. Oh, yeah. We can talk about the lineup all we want to, uh, but those two guys and uh, this this Phillies bullpen, uh, the Phillies bullpen has been phenomenal. Um, it, it, look, the deeper you get into the ma- in, into Major League Baseball and the playoffs and everything, pitching wins championships, fellas. All right, I know the Phillies are smashing, but pitching is what wins championships. And uh, and those two guys having them one two, uh, that that's elite, and they're both on top of their games right now. Now let's get into the lineup, okay? Uh, what they did to the Braves, 
I loved it. All right. It was phenomenal to watch. All right. And you guys know I'm in Braves country and I take a lot of heat. If you, if you see my post about Bryce Harper, look, Bryce Harper is my favorite player. All right. Um, he's been my favorite player ever okay. since he come into the league. Yeah. He, he's been my favorite player ever since he come in, into the league. I got the chance to meet Bryce, Bryce Harper and spend the day with him back in 2017. Uh, I spent the day with the Washington Nationals, uh, flew to D.C., uh, and then when I was in D.C., took a train in New York City and watched the Yankees play. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I got to do those things. And, and Bryce Harper, I know he takes a lot of uh, criticism and he takes a lot of hate and all that. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> but he's, uh, he, he's, a, he's a dude that loves the game, fellas. And um, – what he's doing in the postseason the last two years, it's unreal. The dude's almost hitting 400 in the postseason, okay? Mm. That, that, is, that is insane. When the lights are the brightest, Bryce Harper shows up. Um, and I hate when people – I hate when people just hate on him just because he was a phenom out of high school uh, because – if you watch Bryce, man, nobody plays the game harder than he does. And I think he fully embraced the city of Philadelphia. And I think he took on that role uh, as being the, the image of that franchise, being the guy of that franchise. And that only helped the Phillies. And now you got Kyle Schwarber. He shows up last night and hits a bomb. Uh, Trey Turner getting him. Uh, leaves Washington and goes to L.A., and then they get him from L.A., and uh, this lineup is absolutely filthy, and they're doing it without Reese Hoskins. All right, uh, he's He was out for the year. So uh, it's uh, – yeah, they're surprising, but I think the lineup doesn't surprise me. Yeah, uh, It's really in the bullpen on the back end of that uh, and, and the pieces that they got uh, to come in there. And uh, like a Craig Kimbrell to be your closer, that's a championship pedigree right there. That dude knows how to win. He knows how to close games out. He's been in big-time moments. Uh, so I, I really love what this Phillies pitching staff has done because I know the lineup. I know what they're going to do. They're just going to hit, man. They're going to keep hitting. Even Brandon Marsh is, is hitting. And, and uh, Nick Castellanos, man, what they're doing uh, – you better get them in a in a in a cold snap because uh, right now they are on fire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I'm, right now I'm looking at it. I, I do agree with you. I think the Texans are going to be a really good matchup with them. But I just from what I've seen from the Phillies, just the overall the whole team being you know putting putting in a, a part. Uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm seeing from them. It's. It's. It seems like a, a an entirety uh, of a team working together to to pull out these wins and winning convincingly too. Uh, and so I just I look at the Phillies. I, I'm I'm having a hard time betting against them right now, just because of what they've been able to do so far in this this uh, postseason. But Jeremy, uh, I don't know how you can top what what Blake was is able to put to the table when it comes to baseball. But uh, how about these Phillies right now? Yeah, I'm not gonna even try to top what Blake just ran <laughs> just what Blake just went off with but all I'm gonna say is seeing Philadelphia put up 15 points in the last two games that is unbelievable and like Blake said the best pitchings pitchers win championships that's all I can really say like what in this kind of a game you need to have your a game and they need to bring it every single game and then looking at Philadelphia they're definitely bringing it every single night in and night out so these guys they've been definitely lighting the scoreboard up and like I said I'm not going to top Blake so that's my two cents of baseball and let's go Phillies all right, for for non baseball guys like you and me, Jeremy, uh, not not super big into baseball, trying to get more into it. It's fifteen runs. Uh, that's the correct terminology there, not points. But uh, you know, <laughs> runs puts points up on the board though, so I guess we'll we'll take it. No, I yeah. uh, just had to give you a hard time there. But uh, Jeremy, I'm going to turn it over to you. I know you've got like, stuff for the two minute drill. Give it to us, man. What do we got? Oh, yeah. Two minute drill. Uh, this is where Blake and I are going to give a response to the the top updates that Jeremy has for us. Uh, and we're going to give that in about two minutes a piece, but we we tend to go a little over that, but we'll give it a shot anyways. 
we'll say two and a half minute drill. We'll put it that way. <laughs> um, first up on the lineup list, we got Brock Bowers out four to six weeks, which is mind boggling for Georgia. Brock Bowers sustained an ankle injury with, and he will undergo tie rope surgery to repair a sprained ankle suffering bond Saturday's win over Vandy. And he will expect to make a full recovery. Now, Blake, I'm going to start this off with you. We've obviously talked a lot about about Brock Bowers of Georgia. What does Georgia do now without having their number one tight end? Will they will affect them in a long run? Like, will a potential three peat maybe go away, or will Georgia still be bargain? Blake, what do you got? Look, guys. Uh, yeah, it hurts. All right. He's a dude. He's the best player in the country, honestly. Uh, if we really want to break it down, he's the top ten pick in the NFL draft. But I don't think G- Georgia goes away. They got Oscar Delp right there. He's a sophomore, 6'5", 6'4", 6'5". I think he's like 230, 240. Uh, dude's an absolute stud. Watched him against Auburn. He had a couple of catches against us. Uh, now, he's no Brock Bowers, right? No Brock Bowers. But you're get, you're going to get a lad McConkey back fully healthy. Uh, you, you 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 can still run the ball. Carson Beck is still growing as a quarterback. You're going to rely on your defense like Georgia always does. I know they got a tough stretch, but they're still going to win the SEC East. All these people are overreacting, in my opinion, with oh Georgia's done. They're falling off. They lost. You know they lost Brock Bowers. Well, look, just two weeks ago you told me Georgia was going to lose to Kentucky. <laughs> I, 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 I did. Well, what are we doing here, man? Look, they still are the king of college football right now. They're still recruiting in the top three of college football every year. They have blue chips on that roster. Oscar Delp is a dude you're going to find out here soon. They still have weapons. I know they've played close games, but look at last year. They, they went out to Missouri and almost got beat, had to come from behind in the fourth quarter, and everybody was like, oh, Georgia sucks. They almost lost to Missouri. Georgia, it's over. They're not winning the national championship. And then they go out in the national championship, and they win by 55 points. All right, so I, I, just, just, just pump the brakes, man. Georgia's fine. There you go. I mean, Josh, going over to you, like, like a little bit on Blake's topic, how do you think uh, Kirby Smart will adjust to it? Because obviously we've seen Georgia, they've had a strong run game, and do you think we're going to see some wide receivers step up to the plate now that they don't have their number one tight end to throw to? Yeah, yeah. The one guy that I want to bring up, uh, you know, Blake already mentioned about McConkie. That, that's one dude I look at, and I think he's going to be able to step in and at least fill the role uh, to what they need. And I do agree with Blake. I think George is going to be totally fine. This does hurt the team, uh, and, it, and it sucks because that's that's your main guy. And it hurts Carson Beck in his growth process. But what we've seen from Carson Beck is a steady growth. It's not just been a growth, but it's been a very steady growth because he started off week one, two, even three, not looking very good. And and it was kind of uh, – it, it was – a little concerning to see him start so slow, but then and, and you know, and in week four through seven so far, we've seen him have a very steady, very constant growth, and it's been a quick growth, and and it's it's one that uh, you compare it to the likes of what, what we saw from Stetson Bennett, and he he's putting up better numbers so far, uh, and and you know, so looking at at George, I think. They're going to be just fine without him. It does suck, and hopefully he has a speedy recovery. Uh, hopefully he's able to to come out and, and still play just the same way. Hopefully it doesn't affect his game. But he is—he's one of the top top dudes in the nation, regardless of position. Uh, and and you know, Jeremy, you had him. He's a tight end, and you had him in your top five for Heisman. Uh, and and he was definitely an honorable mention for my for me. So just looking at at Brock Bowers, yeah, it's going to hurt, um, but. Don't think that the, that the three peats still not cooking. And if you do think that, like what Blake said with Kentucky, we saw this this Kentucky team. Uh, they they came out and and they got embarrassed by Georgia, and they didn't even have to use Brock Bowers a whole lot. They they really didn't use him on a lot of key plays. And so looking at this, I think they're going to be just fine. And so for Georgia and their future, uh, I think they're going to be all right. But uh, overall, uh, I'm I'm. I'm I'm, I'm sad to see Brock Bowers not on the field, but I think they're going to be just fine, and I think there's going to be plenty of guys that are going to be able to step up in his place. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm in the same boat as both of you guys. George is still cooking for a 3 P in my opinion. But going on to our next topic, Conor McGregor is back in the news, ladies and gentlemen. He will not face any sexual assault charges after allegations at an NBA game 
finals in Miami. McGregor was accused of violently forcing himself into a woman and kissing her in a VIP bathroom during Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Now, McGregor has definitely had his name in a lot of stuff. But, Josh, with McGregor's actions, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's going to have any consequences? Do you think anything is going to pop up? No, I mean, it looks like uh, all the charges have been dropped from what I was reading. Uh, and so, you know, that's that's good for him. I'm glad to hear it. And we talked about this story when it first happened. It's just, it's it's one of those stories that's hard to talk about because you don't want to tell the girl that she's lying. But this story just seemed so unrealistic. Uh, and so we, we look at the story and we think of, of what was going on there. Uh, and it just didn't seem real. And so I'm glad that the, the charges aren't going to be pressed against him anymore. And it seems like uh, by investigation, they, they don't have anything that can prove that this was sexual assault or anything like that. And so uh, we've talked about this a lot before, too, about how we, we, we it turns out that the, the women here in, in this story, the, the, the uh, quote unquote victim to, to begin this this whole story, uh, turns out that they're, they're not telling the truth. And we don't have any kind of punishment for that, for trying to get some dude in trouble. And, and you know, he's going to have to pay you out money and whatever the case may be. Uh, it, it just it, it's it's disgusting to look at it this way. And, and there needs to be some sort of punishment for anyone who's who's a quote unquote victim in this situation. It turns out that they weren't. Absolutely. And you said the best. But Blake, kind of the same same question as you gave Josh. What do you think of this entire situation and what do you think of Conor McGregor and this entire thing? She'll do nothing. All right. <laughs> She'll do nothing. See you in the ring against Michael Chandler or whoever you want to fight, big dog. Get back in there. I'm ready to see a show. Uh, I'm tired of seeing guys dropping out and taking 10 day replacements and all that. Give me a show. Give me the Irishman. I want to see him back in there. I don't care if he gets. I don't care if he gets slipped. I really don't. I just want to see him back in there. So she'll do nothing, and uh, I just need to see you back in the ring, brother. I love it. Absolutely. I mean, we've all been waiting to see Conor McGregor back in the octagon and do yeah. typical Conor McGregor and just do his lovely waltz around the ring like we're used to seeing. But man, the dude's jacked right topic. now too. I mean, if you guys have, have seen, oh, him, dude. oh man, I, I'm I'm pumped to watch him get back in the ring. Hey, dude, me too, the, Blake. What you got? You know, here's the other thing is the double champ does what he wants, all right? He doesn't have to apologize to anybody, all right? So, <laughs> yes, well, that's what I was just going to say. So tell that woman to know her row and shut her mouth. <laughs> oh, man, y'all are still in my punchlines. Come on now. But going to our next topic, we got Julio Jones signing a one-year contract deal with the Philadelphia Eagles, seven-time Pro Bowler. It's Julio Jones. What else do we have to say? Julio Jones, like I said, signed with a one-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't necessarily know what the – um, the money factor was, but it's cool to definitely see Julio Jones go to the Philadelphia Eagles now. Blake, I'm going to kick this off with you. How do you think Julio Jones is going to impact the Eagles overall with so far in this season? Hometown guy, baby. Love Julio Jones, uh, even though he went to the University of Alabama. I, I think this is a nice fit for the Eagles. Uh, you're not asking Julio to come in and be the Julio of old, right? Uh, you're not asking him to come in and be that Falcons guy. Uh, maybe they just want to get Julio on the field um, and and create a little space for other guys, you know. Or, or this this flat out could be a try to get Julio a ring before he retires. Um, but I, I just feel like they want Julio just to be a possession receiver. Uh, if you need a first down, get to the sticks, make the big body catch, and get a first down. This he's not coming in to, you know. Uh, have a thousand yard year or anything like that so uh, I, I do think it was a nice pickup yeah absolutely and i saw i thought the same thing i thought it was a good pickup now josh obviously i know julio jones is going to be reunited with aj brown with the eagles now how do you how do you expect julio jones to impact with philadelphia eagles do you think they're gonna fly or do you think they're gonna fall from the clouds 
Yeah, I mean, we, we picked the Eagles to be the, the, one of our favorites for really all of it. Uh, and I, they wouldn't surprise me one bit. I think right now, and we mentioned this a, a, f- a few episodes ago, talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the Eagles and the 49ers right now are the top two teams. You had a dude like Julio Jones. I don't think he's going to add a lot of production. I'm right there with Blake. I don't think he's going to be the guy that you go to. But on top of that, you don't need another wide receiver over there in Philly. You, you're stacked in that in that department. Uh, so adding another big body receiver, a, a veteran too at that, and you know, seeing what he can do, I don't know if he's going to do a whole lot, um, but I do think he just adds that extra factor, a dude that's not going to drop the ball. Uh, I'd like to see the Eagles fly. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see them go all the way and uh, give him, him a ring. I think he's a dude that's well-deserving of it with all the time he's put in and the hard work, all the effort, all the stats that he's put in. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, you know, with, with – uh, Jason Kelsey too. I think that that'd be another another reason for me to look at and be like, man, I'd, two guys, you know, if this is their last year, let them go out with a ring. Absolutely, I I would love to see Julio Jones go out with the ring. That's a for definite sure. But going on to our last topic for the two minute drill: Colts Anthony Richardson to undergo season ending surgery on his shoulder. Now Richardson obviously sustained an injury to his AC joint on his right throwing shoulder, which. Either way, getting an injury like that is just really, really unfortunate. But the 2023 number four overall pick was obviously placed on IR. Then we obviously know the rest. Now he's going to be undergoing surgery. Now, Josh, I'm going to kick this off with you first. Richardson started four games as a rookie and completed 50 of 84 for 577 yards. Now, looking at their backup quarterback, Garner Minshew, do you think he's going to be – putting up the same kind of numbers as Richardson, or do you think it's going to be a downfall for the Colts? Yeah, I mean, I don't think the Colts were in a really good position to start the season. Uh, you know, I was joking with my brother about putting money on the Colts to win it uh, just because if it were to pay out, but I know I'm not. it's not going to, so why would I waste my money and be irresponsible? Um, but, yeah, I mean, Anthony Richardson, to start off with him, he he surprised a lot of people. I think the, all of all three of us uh, are in that group. You know, with how well he's performed transitioning into the into the NFL. I think I, I expected him to progress, uh, and I thought that he had a lot of room for improvement. But he's he's shown a lot of quick progression, and I think he's showing that he can pass the ball much better than he did. So maybe that was something to do with uh, with with being in Florida too. Uh, so who knows? But I I. I I, I hope that he has a speedy recovery as well. I know it's going to be season ending, um, but come back next season strong. And, and as far as the Colts with Gardner Minshew, I think Minshew was just a, a one and done kind of guy. I don't I don't expect him to do a whole lot for them. But uh, who knows? It's nebulous, as Michael Scott would say. So maybe maybe something good happens from it. Uh, maybe maybe the Colts surprise the rest of the nation, and somebody does pay out on that on that Colts Super Bowl ticket. Yeah, then Blake, kind of the same question for you. Do you think uh, Garner Minshew has anything to give to the Colts? Or do you think it's going to be a dumpster fire? I mean, I think they'll be competitive. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be a dumpster fire, but because um, he's serviceable. Like, he's not terrible, yeah. you know. Um, I, I don't know if it'll be a dumpster fire, but – um, my thing, my thing with Anthony Richardson, man, is if you're already having season-ending sh- shoulder surgery, um, th- look, he he just runs the ball too much, man. Uh, and you start taking those blows. Look, one of my favorite players from Auburn University, Cameron Newton. All right, it happened to Cam. The injuries start to pile up. All right, and and once those shoulders start having surgery, uh, it things might not ever be the same again, you know, and, and uh, that was the downfall for Cam and you're already in year one having to have shoulder surgery. Uh, So I'm just, I'm not sure uh, where this is going to take Anthony Richardson. You know, I hope he bounces back because I agree with Josh. I I thought he'd come in and and he was showing signs of improvement from Florida. Uh, He looked good week one. And, uh, and then the injury started to pile up. He was having to sit out a couple weeks, and then he'd come back. And uh, hopefully he can bounce back from this because I do think he's a better quarterback than what we thought coming out of Florida, right? Like, we just – we saw him rip a couple throws, and we were like, all right, he's just throwing the ball down the field. And, you know, he's mostly a runner. Uh, but he wasn't bad, you know. And, and I, it just scares me for the shoulder surgery, man. It scares me because – uh, when you start getting those shoulders played with, uh, it's uh, 
it's all downhill from there. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one quick question for both of y'all. Do you think there's any contention for them to make the postseason in this kind of a situation? No. No. Nah. Yeah. No, I don't, and, and I agree Any with Blake. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a dumpster fire just because they are in a rebuild right now. I think they're, they've been in a rebuild for a few years, and they're trying to find the right path. I don't think the, the owner and, and the GM are doing a good job of it. I'm not a few, huge fan of Ursay, um, but you know they're they're in, they're in a pretty big rebuild. So uh, I, like like you said, I don't call it a dumpster fire, but definitely a a long process. Yeah, yeah I. I say that the pretty best, but Josh, that is all that we have for two minute drill. Now we got some interesting topics to talk about because I know we've been talking about the Heisman top five candidates for a good chunk of time now. So I'm going to kick it back to you and let's get rolling with these Heisman picks. Well, before you kick it back to me, uh, before we get into the Heisman picks, I think you have a uh, a little bit of a word from our friends over at SeatGeek as well. So I'll let you take it over for that too. Oh, yeah, definitely. We can talk about SeatGeek. Before we, obviously, like you said, we dive in. Um, if you haven't had much time, I would definitely go on to SeatGeek.com. I want to take a moment and tell you a little bit about it. If you're if you're a fan of live events like all of us are, whether it's sports, music, or theater, or little itty-bitty things, you can tell, I can tell you right now, SeatGeek is definitely the way to go. That um, With a seamless mobile experience, SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets just in two simple taps it's so simple and it doesn't get any simpler than that ladies and gentlemen but it gets even better lily seat geek grades every ticket from red to green and it's based on the value so like if you pick on a green seat it's going to be a pretty good seat for a good deal now if you get into the red seats then that's going to be the not so great ones to look at but i can tell you right now every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can stop you can shop securely with comfortable pr- peace of mind and now i can tell you right now guys i love seat geek josh loves seat geek blake is probably in the same boat we all love seat geek so much if you go down to SeatGeek.com and use our code that is r2to you will get 20 dollars off and i can tell you right now i love seat geek i use it a- so much for concerts around up here in the midwest then josh is usually used to using it for um nfl tickets or college tickets or whatever the situation is but i can tell you right now you will not be disappointed with SeatGeek. So just just go ahead and download the SeatGeek app or visit SeatGeek.com and use the code R2TO for $20 off. So now, Josh, back to you for Heisman Top Fives. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, too, I even have uh, the SeatGeek uh, tickets. We we got the Oklahoma tickets for the game this weekend, and I just bought more Oklahoma tickets for the game against uh, West Virginia as well. And I'm sure I'll be getting on there for the Big 12 tickets here in a little in a little, a little while too, yeah. try to get, get on there. So yeah, absolutely. Go check them out, SeatGeek.com or the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO. Get yourself $20 off. Save a little bit on the on the uh, SeatGeek app uh, or over at SeatGeek. But let's get to the Heisman Top 5, guys. Uh, Blake, let's start, start off with you. What is your Top 5 now? Because I feel like there's been a little bit of a shakeup. Uh, we may not have similar guys that may have been in there last week we may have new guys entering into the mix uh maybe we have a, a new front runner uh let's let's hear it from you what's your, what's your top five i'm gonna go at number five i'm gonna go jj mccarthy at number five Ooh, uh, like he's it. got he's got michigan rolling right now uh and, there, and there's bigger opportunities ahead i know their schedule hasn't been that great whatever uh, you play who's on your schedule and he's been balling out i will go with jj at number five uh at number four i am going to go with mm, man this is tough uh i'm gonna go with jordan travis uh quarterback at florida state uh i think uh what he is doing for the florida state seminoles i don't think he's getting enough love right now um i think uh, he's got that offense rolling. I know with the receivers that they got and everything, it's a high-powered offense. But uh, uh, he's just uh, he's he's putting it out there. He's delivering the football. He's playing really well. I thought he had uh, a much better performance against LSU than you know what a lot of people gave him credit for. Uh, but I think he's that dude, man. And then at number three, I am going to go with Jaden Daniels. Uh, I think he stays there. I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Um, I think uh, this LSU offense, man, if they had any type of defense, they could possibly be the best team in the country. Uh, and at number two, I'm going to stick with Bo Nix at number two. Uh, the performance that he had at Washington, 
Look, they should have won the football game. Dan Lanning ran them out of that game. Um, look, we got to start kicking field goals, man. We have a problem in college and professional football uh, with going for it and passing up points uh, when when the points are available. So I think Bo did a phenomenal job on the road uh, in that game. Uh, I still like him at number two. And then obviously Michael Penix Jr. at number one for me. Uh, the guy is unreal. You saw him. You saw him last Saturday against the Oregon Ducks, man. Uh, heck of a quarterback. Uh, he is that guy. So that is my top five for now. Yeah, I like that a lot. And, uh, you know, just seeing seeing what you got too. So uh, I know you mentioned um, – let's see, who was your number five again you had? I had J.J. McCarthy. J- yeah, J.J., that's right. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's the one that I had in my honorable mentions because I was trying to think of who it was that you had down there. Um, but yeah, I had him in a, in a honorable mentions too. So definitely a dude that, like you said, just because they, they're not playing a tough competition doesn't mean anything. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off with mine uh, before Jeremy releases his. Me at, at number five. Uh, so one guy that was not on your list, Blake, and uh, not on my list. I don't have Caleb Williams up there. I thought about putting him at number five, but I'm going to go with dudes that are winners, uh, dudes that are going to come out there and, and perform for their team so number five on my heisman top five list i've got jordan travis uh you put him up there i put him up there as well because i don't think he gets enough credit he doesn't have the stats that some of these guys maybe like a caleb williams might have so i don't think he's looked at enough but the 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 things like the leadership and the things that you see on the field and the way that he's playing that's the kind of stuff the heart that he puts into it uh, that's the kind of stuff that i put into to my top five uh, and then I'm going to go with number four, Bo Nix. Uh, I'm putting Bo Nix up there at number four. And really, I feel like the, the top four, top three guys uh, are right there. Like you said, Blake, I know they lost, but he still put up 337 yards, two touchdowns, and had a heck of a game. And and he marched that, that team down the field and put the ball in, in a, a beautiful spot multiple times. Uh, and like you said, I think Dan Lanning, it is all to blame for that, that game. And I'm sure he'll take the blame too. I haven't heard anything uh, post- you know, post game from Dan Lanning, but uh, yeah, that not a good game from Oregon, but really all on the coaching. Uh, and then I'm going to go up to number three. Uh, I've got Dylan Gabriel, uh, one guy that that uh, Blake didn't have on his his list, but Dylan Gabriel has played lights out. We all saw what he did against against Texas. That was the last time we saw him. So uh, just because he had a bye week, I'm not going to take him out of there. I'm going to keep him up there at number three. I think he's been playing phenomenal. He's been playing much better than I could have expected. Uh, you know, and, and just looking at, at his stats so far this year too, and the what he could put produce and what he's on pace for, I think Dylan Gabriel absolutely deserves to be up there. And then at number two, I'm going to put Jaden Daniels just because I'm bumping him up quite a bit on my list because he performed uh, lights out. Uh, and we talked about about how good he is, and we know that he's good, but he's on a team that yeah they have two losses, and so you know maybe you can criticize me for putting him up there and not Caleb. Williams, but Caleb Williams had an atrocious game uh, against Notre Dame, so that's why I'm taking him out of that top five. He can still earn his spot back there, and I think he's a, he's a great player. But Jaden Daniels is a dude that's performing, and even in his losses, he hasn't ever performed poorly. Uh, and so I think he's a dude that needs to be up there. I'm putting him at number two, and then number one, I'm going to be right there with you. Um, but you know, and then number one, Michael Penix Jr. Uh, so I got, I got Michael Penix Jr. up there at number one. But I'm going to kick it over to you, Jeremy. What do you got for your top five? For my top five, I we're all actually really similar. I'm going to be completely honest with you. My number five, I had J.J. McCarthy as well. And like you guys have said, Michigan has just been on a complete tear. Look at their schedule. But, I mean, you, you can only say so much. But you look at a quarterback's perspective. And J.J. McCarthy, he has definitely been balling out, to say the least. He's, a, he's thrown 1,500 yards for 14 touchdowns. He's only had three interceptions on the year. And for a QP percentage of a completion rate, he's at 78.2%. So I'm not going to be complaining with that kind of a stat now going to my number four i had dylan gabriel for that perspective he's thrown 1800 yards and he's had a total of 16 tutties and only two interceptions and for his quarterback ratio for completions he's at 72.3 percent now you look at these these guys like all of them the top five i really wanted to have Brock Bowers still being there, but obviously with the injury, it's not going to be looking really good. But I have him as my honorable mention just to make him feel really good. Brock Bowers, you're still my number six pick for the Heisman candidate. Then my number three, I had Jordan Travis from Florida State as well. Then Blake's mentioned the best. He's just been tearing it up. I mean, you can you can look at these guys and they just keep balling out. But even going off to my number two pick, back to Blake. Bo who? Bo what? 
Oh, yeah. I forgot. It's Bo Nix, ladies and gentlemen. Bo Nix has been literally balling out. Them in Washington, that was one of the most exciting games I've watched so far this entire season. I was really, really rooting for Oregon to pull this off against Washington. But, I mean, you guys have said the best. Dan Lanning, he definitely needs to he needs to have a little bit of a stiff talk. And, Blake, I know you're going to Oregon, so maybe you can give him a little piece of um, – not only your mind, but all of our minds, to say the least. But Bo Nix has thrown for almost 1,800 yards, 1,796 to be exact. He's had 17 tutties. He's only thrown one pick and a completion rate of 79.2%. So looking at this, it's definitely really, really good. But going to my number one, my number one changed just because my recent, my last time we talked about our top five Heismans, I had Caleb Williams, but – I didn't even have him on my, on my list. And, of course, my number one, like we all have, is Michael Penix Jr. He's he's just been balling with Washington. He's just definitely been – he's been playing to his full potential. And you guys have obviously seen Michael Penix Jr. has been balling out. Like I said, he's thrown for 2,300 yards. That's unbelievable. Then having 20 touchdowns, three interceptions, and a complete, completion percentage of 72.1%. So, you, for these top five guys, you can literally pick any of them. But – they are literally all dogs, to say the least. But that's my top five for the Heisman. And like, like I said, between everybody, we were all really, really summer in this kind of situation. Yeah, and I would even say uh, another honorable mention to throw in there. I think Quinn Ewers is a guy that can work his way up into the that top five talk for me. Uh, and then either even uh, L- Luther Burden Jr. too. Uh, or uh, Luther, Bur- Luther Burden. Yeah. Is he the third? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, we, we got him too. I think he's another one that you could throw in there. Um, and just looking at, at what these guys have been able to do, uh, a couple of guys that I wanted to throw there in the honorable mentions as well. But, guys, let's jump over to our top bets of college football week eight. We're going to uh, throw out our top bets, the, the bets that we see as things we can lock in on. Uh, and you can take our advice or don't. Uh, that's totally up to you. But top bets of the week. I'm going to start us off. I'll start off with my number three top bet. I'm going to go Duke plus 14 and a half against Florida State. I think Florida State's a really good team, but Duke has shown that they, they can stick around with the top top dogs. And I think 14 and a half, I think they can keep this within that 14 and a half. I don't think they get beat by two touchdowns, maybe by 11, 12 points at the most. And I think Florida State's going to win the game. I, I will pick Florida State to, to win it outright, but I, I think Duke can keep it a little closer than that 14 and a half. Uh, Blake, what about you? Uh, my number three bet, I'm going to take Tennessee uh, in the nine points at Alabama. Ooh, okay. uh, this is a rivalry. It's a rivalry game. Tennessee uh, really running the ball nice. I know they couldn't do it down in Gainesville, but uh, that is their bread and butter. I'm not convinced on Joe Milton, uh, but I think Tennessee scores enough to keep this a, a one-possession game. I like that one. I like that one a lot. A good pick. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? My number three pick, I had the money line for the Iowa Hawkeyes versus the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and I'm going with all reliable Hawkeyes. Let's go at a minus 170 in between. For what we've seen from Iowa, they've been playing pretty well, to say the least. I know they're 6 they're six and 1. I mean, their only loss is against a really, really good Penn State team. But, I mean, for the overall aspect, Iowa is definitely – they've stepped at the plate for so many aspects. I know they were really – they were really kind of skeptical, at least from what I've heard from people. They were kind of skeptical about what the season is going to be like. Is it going to be another repeat for like what Petrus brought to the table last year? But to say the least, I think um, a lot of those people definitely got shut up just because Iowa is definitely not playing around this year. Yeah, yeah, I think they're pretty good, and it's crazy to see that even at 31 and a half, uh, <laughs> they still might not hit the over. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I it's, 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 it's definitely a good pick, too. I like them to beat uh, and beat – uh, who did you say they were going against again? The Minnesota Golden Gophers. That, that's right. That's right. I had that one down earlier too, and uh, I ended up taking that off to throw a couple in there on, on top of it. But uh, I'm going to go with another pick. I've got Ohio State money line at Penn State, or going against Penn State in the horseshoe. I think Penn State's a heck of a team, and it's crazy to me that in the AP poll uh, we saw Penn State drop, even though they won 63 zip. Uh, and, and looking at that, that was kind of crazy to me. But uh, looking at Penn State, I think they're a really good team, and I think they're going to come in there guns a-blazing. But 
you're going to Columbus, and I, I don't think you pull out uh, with the win there. So I think Ohio State wins that one in a really close one. I think that's going to be a really fun game and one to definitely watch. Um, but I'm going to take Ohio State money line at minus 180. So pretty good odds there too. But Blake, what about you? You got another one for us? My number two pick, I'm taking Utah on the points at plus seven at USC. Ooh, I'm not like a believer. It. I'm not a believer in USC. I'm not. Like Even it. with Utah's offense and everything, uh, I think they can score on U- USC's defense. Um, and I just – I know this USC team got a lot of praise, but I'm just not confident with them. Yeah, yeah, no, I like I like the Trojan hate too. Uh, so I'm sure there there will be a lot of Oklahoma fans that that like that pick, um, oh. just because I feel like a lot of Oklahoma fans like to pick on USC because they're the ones that that look like they're they're struggling on defense now. But Jeremy, what about you? You got another one for us? My number two pick. I had the over under with the South Carolina versus Missouri game. Currently, the the over under is at sixty, and. I chose the under on this one, to be honest with you, just because looking at South Carolina with what Spencer Rowler's bringing to the table, don't get me wrong, Spencer Rowler's, he's been showing up just because obviously this is a make or break year for his last year. Then what Missouri has brought, they're definitely a team that they that you can't sleep on, to say at least. But I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like a 28 to 21 game. I think it's going to be a really close game between these two teams. So I'm sticking with the under on this one. Yeah, I like that one. I like that pick quite a bit. Uh, I'll go with another one. Uh, I've got a few that I've got that I like, and I don't know which one I want to go with, but I think I'm going to go with Washington State versus Oregon, and I'm going to take the over, uh, just like Jeremy was taking the under on that one. That point total is sitting at 62. Uh, I think Oregon is, is just a team that I feel comfortable taking the over on just about anything that you put on the board for them. Uh, so I think they're going to be able to score a lot. I think they're going to expose this Washington State defense that's been speedy and they've been effective, but I don't think they're going to be effective enough to stop Oregon. So, I, and I think Washington State can put some points up on the board too. So, uh, looking at this game, I think I think I'm going to take the over at, on that at 62. I think this will be a higher scoring game, and I think Oregon will win this one pretty comfortably too, especially after last week and, and that heartbreaking loss against Washington. Uh, Blake, you got one more with for us? Yeah, my my most confident one is uh, Missouri minus seven at home against South Carolina. Uh, I think this Missouri offense is too much for a very bad, bad South Carolina defense. Uh, and I think the Missouri defense put some heat on Spencer Rattler. Um, and I just like Missouri, man. They got one of the best receivers in the country with Luther Burden. So uh, I just think there's too many weapons. Yeah, yeah, I like that one a lot too. And, and looking at Missouri too, I, I, they're they're one of those those sneaky good teams too. You you don't really realize how good they are until you're going against them. But Jeremy, what about you? Wrap us up with a final pick. My final one, I had the over under against Penn State, like you mentioned, Josh, with Penn State and Ohio State. But I am picking the over for this one. It's currently sitting at forty five and a half. Just between these two teams, I know, like you said, they're going to the horseshoe, but. Between both Penn State and Ohio State, I know they can definitely sling the ball around, whether it's from the quarterback's perspective or even let the running game go for both of them. I mean, obviously with Ohio State, they got Marvin Harris Jr. What can we? What more do we have to really say than for Penn State? They definitely have plenty of weapons on both their outsides. So I think this is going to be a, a good game overall, but I think they're going to get over 45 points between both of these teams. So I'm sticking with the over on this. I mean, the over, yeah, correct me. Okay, yeah, I like I like that one as well. Yeah, I'm looking at that one. I think that's a that's a tough one to pick too, just because uh, in looking at it, you it, I feel like it could go either way. So you've kind of kind of got a, a good shot one way or the other. But I like the over with that one yeah. as well. I think that's that's a a solid way to go. I was looking at that points total, and I just thought for myself, I'm going to stay away from it because I couldn't I couldn't make a decision. But you might have pushed me over the edge. I might I might take that over with you too. Um, but that's our. Yeah top bets of the week for college football week eight everybody um, that's pretty much all we got for you so we appreciate everybody so much for watching if you're watching on on youtube please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and go ahead and hit that like button as well you can comment down below let us know what your top picks are whether you like our top five heisman talk about the uh college or the uh, sorry not the college the uh, world series the, the mlb playoffs and what's going on there you can talk about anything with us we'll read your comments we th- thank you guys so much for all the support we've seen over there but if you're listening on apple podcast spotify wherever you listen to podcasts you can give us a five star review it's the best way to help us on those platforms and again you can always go over to rising2.com that's r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o.com and you can click on the review button and give us a review there if you're not listening on one of those two 
platforms there. Um, we thank everybody so much. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, all that fun stuff. But we thank you all so much for watching, for listening, for supporting. Until next time.